Hi there and welcome to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and in this video we'll be looking at five ways that you can transfer files to your M5 Stack devices. Now for M5 Stack users that typically only use UI Flow, you might think it's only possible to transfer images and Blockly files. We'll challenge that later on in the video. But first let's have a look at a great piece of software called UPI Loader. UPI Loader is a cross-platform file management tool that allows us to copy files to and from the device both over serial and also via Wi-Fi. Click on latest release to get a link to the downloads which I'll also post in the description below. If you're on Windows or Linux then go ahead and download 0.14. For some reason, 0.14 doesn't have a Mac version. However, 0.13 does, so we'll download that. Once we extract and run the program, we'll be greeted by this screen. The left-hand column shows files on our computer, and the right-hand column will show the files on the flash system of the M5 stack device once it's connected. Select the serial port of your device from the drop-down list and then hit Connect. The first time you try to connect, you'll get a message saying the transfer scripts are missing. All we need to do is click on File and choose Init Transfer Files. Now you'll notice an Upload.py and a Download.py file in the directory. Now all we need to do to copy files across to the computer is select the file we want to copy, then enter the destination and hit Transfer. Unfortunately, one downside to UPI Loader is that we can't navigate to other folders. We can only access files that are in the root of the file system. And we can't copy folders either. UPI Loader does have a lot of other nice features though. We can open Python files, edit them, and even execute them on the device. Copying files from your computer to the device is just as easy. Select the file you want and then hit the transfer button below. By default it will put it in the root of the device, but we can manually enter the path where we want the file to go. All in all, UPI Loader is an invaluable tool for the MicroPython programmer. Next up is Ampy. We've covered Ampy in a previous video. To see how you can get set up, make sure to click the link above. Essentially, we start a terminal session and then kill any processes on the device by hitting Ctrl and C and then Ctrl A and backslash to end the terminal session. Then to use Ampy, all we need to do is type Ampy and then two hyphens and port followed by the port name and then the command we wish to use such as ls to list the files in the device. And we don't need to enter the board rate here. Ampy doesn't do a very good job of copying image files or non-text files. However, it's great for copying MicroPython libraries over to the Flash that we might want to use. Here I have a bunch of MicroPython libraries. All I need to do is select the library I want, copy its name, and then again enter ampy the port name and then put followed by the name of the library or the file I wish to copy. If the file transfer was successful we'll get no error messages and we'll be able to continue to transfer other files. To double check that the files really did get copied across all we need to do is ampy port ls flash or we can go back and open a screen terminal again import the OS module and then do an os.list directory command. Next up we have the VS Code MicroPython plugin. We've done videos on this before so if you want to check how to get set up with that then click the link above. All we need to do is go into the extensions tab and search for M5 stack and there's only one plugin there. Just install that. Now you'll need to make sure that your M5 stack is plugged in and switched into USB mode. 
After the plugins installed, you'll see the text Add M5 Stack at the bottom of the screen. When you click on this, you'll enter it into a list where you can select the port of your device. Select the port, click OK. Now make sure you've switched over to the Explorer tab and down at the bottom you'll see a drop down list that says M5 Stack Device and then below we will see the file hierarchy. From here we can browse the folders and select the files. A nice feature here is if you click on an image file you'll get a preview of it. If you click on a Python file you can see the code, edit it and even run it on the device. Now unfortunately the VS Code plugin only supports transferring files to the file system or creating script files. We can do this by pressing the plus button to add a script file or pressing the upload button to upload a file from the computer. VS Code also serves as a nice MicroPython development environment where we can type our code and then run it on the fly. Next we have SD storage. Pop your files onto an SD, insert it into the device, then on the next reboot it will automatically be mounted in the file system. While these files are not technically on the M5 stack, we can still refer to them in our scripts and include them in our programs. Let's use the import OS module to list the contents of the SD card. I have one MicroPython library here which I can import simply by typing import and then its name minus the .py extension. An SD card is generally the best option to store images and sound files and log data instead of taking up the precious flash memory of the M5 stack device. Lastly we have a bit of an unconventional way to transfer files. So we said that UIFlow can only transfer image files or .m5f Blockly files. Well there's nothing to stop us from renaming Python files and giving them a .jpg extension. Here's a Python script I renamed earlier. Notice it transfers the file without any issues. To double check it was actually copied across, let's import the OS module by using an execute code block. Now I'll create a text label and add a label show block which we'll use to display the directory contents. The UIFlow upload function automatically places the files in the res folder. I'll create a function here that I'll call file list. Then I'll create another execute block to run the list directory function of the OS module, pointing it to the res folder. Making sure that I assign that to a variable, create a variable of the same name and then put that in the return position of the function block. Now I can drag the function name into the label show block. When I run this I can see that the file has successfully been copied across. But it still has the .jpg extension so I won't be able to use it as a script until I rename it. Fortunately the OS module also has a function called rename. To demonstrate how we would rename the file I can create a button press block and then another execute code block which will use the os.rename function and then the original file name and location followed by the output file name and location that I want. Now if we run this we can see that our file has been renamed to a .py file. Now if I go into MicroPython I could run this file with a few lines of code. However an easier way to run it would just be to copy it into the apps folder and then I can choose it from the apps list when I reboot the device. That's it for our video today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, please leave them down in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the new year. Goodbye.